I know a businessman who has a very big decision to make today. Last year, he was in the same exact situation and he made a wrong call. And that mistake cost him half of his profit. On this very day in October, he's anxious not to make the wrong decision again. Gomyo is a farmer from Bugale in the Eawati Delta. He's a kind husband and also a proud father. For the last five months, he has put a lot of efforts and investments into his farm business. His paddy fields have now ripened, and he's just about to see his returns. But today, he's facing a dilemma. To harvest or not to harvest, that is the question. It has been raining in Gomil's village for the last few days. You see, to harvest paddy and to dry them in the sand afterwards, Gomil needs a solid five days of sunshine. Even just one day of rain will result in lower yield and lower income. But if the rain continues for weeks, and if Gomio waits for too long, the paddy is going to get overripe, and he will lose all of his crops. Gomio has also been in deep agony because of weather. It was Cyclone Nagas. He lost everything back then. He lost his house, his farm, and even both of his parents. It took him a long, long time and a lot of endurance to get back on his feet. Nagas was an important lesson for him to never make a light judgment on weather again. So since then, he always listens to the radio and reads newspaper every day to get a daily update. And today, he's very frustrated. You see, to make the harvest decision, Gomio needs the weather focus for the next five days. But all the weather focus currently accessible to him are only for the next two days. And most of these focus are way too generalized for the whole ARD region. And you know the delta is huge. This village is just a tiny spot on the map. Perhaps it may not rain at all in his village. But the things that he finds the most confusing are all the percentages that the weatherman says. 50% chance of rain. What does it even mean? Is it going to rain in five villages out of 10 or five out of 10 hours during the next day? The weather information currently available to Gomyo isn't just that helpful to make a good decision. How would you decide if you were Gomyo? Would you go ahead and harvest now and risk losing a lot of money? Or would you try waiting for a few days and see if the rain will stop? There are over 20 million farmers in rural Myanmar who rely on farming as their primary income source. Like Gomyo, they work very hard and are full of tenacity. You would think that their hard work and grit should lead to success. But the truth is, not all of our farmers are successful in farming. And that is because they are struggling with decision making every day. A small farmer has about 100 major decisions to make in a typical cropping season of four to five months. That is more decisions than what you and I usually make in a similar period of time. What crops should I grow? How much input should I add? And when? Which pest is it? Is it serious enough for me to go buy pesticides? And the small farmers have to make all of these decisions without having any relevant data. This is just really tough. Here's what a lot of farmers that I have met say to me. Farming is like gambling. It doesn't matter which decision you make. At the end of the day, it is all up to fate. Well, I study statistics, and you know what statistics are good at, right? Gambling. We are trained officially and legally to win a poker game. And uh, growing up, I also learned how to play cards even before I learned how to read and write. 
My grandmother used to babysit、uh, me and my cousin because my parents were busy working, and she taught us how to play cards. Obviously, our parents were very upset when they found out, but she told them, "What do you know? I'm training them to be good in math." Well, I guess、uh, she was correct. My cousin became a computer scientist, and I became a statistician. I believe in the power of data in decision making. That was why I was drawn into the field of statistics in the first place. So when the farmers started telling me that farming is like gambling, the nerd in me immediately started to calculate probability. What are the chances of success for our small farmers in Myanmar, and how can we improve these chances? These are the critical questions for our country, and I believe big data. Can help answer these. So when we talk about big data, we tend to think of it as something not accessible in Myanmar yet. We think of it as something coming out from a startup in the Silicon Valley or a lab in MIT. I lead a business called Farm Advisory Services at Proximity Designs. It is a social enterprise here in Myanmar, working to increase the income of smallholder farmers. Let me share with you one example of. How my team is using big data to help farmers with their decision making. You see, farmers are very busy, tending to their farm all day, every day. So that's why we meet them out in the fields. They don't have the time to come to us, so we go to them. So farmers are like you and me. When we get busy, we forget things, and then we get stressed, and then we forget more, and then we make mistakes. We make wrong decisions. So. We have been sending farmers SMSs, simple SMSs, just like notifications, to keep them on top of their game and to guide them to all through the farming season. We also send them ab about any unusual weather outbreaks or any pest outbreaks near their fields. So this sounds easy. Sending an SMS is easy. Reading an SMS, even for a farmer, is also very easy. But the hard part is. Write in the message. Don't we all hate spam messages? Every message has to be relevant for every farmer. Well, if all farmers in Myanmar live in the same village and grow only one variety of paddy and start planting on the same date, this job is very easy. We only need one message to send to all. But our farmers. Live all across the country, grow over 200 varieties of paddy, and only God knows when they're gonna start planting. Some of us has the same nightmare with permutation and combinations back in high school or college. So we get all our combinations of farmers, and then we map out the key decisions and the activities that each combination is making, and then we link those decisions with extra data sets like soil analyses. Pest outbreaks or weather. This is how we get our lovely SMSs, customized for every farmer, so that they can make a good decision, best fit for their situation. Don't you think it is amazing? I think it is. I just love this. I love big data. <laughs> What about farmers? Do you think they love big data? <laughs> yeah, no. In fact, they hate big data. They don't want big data. They want small data. They want their data to be simple. They want it relevant. They want it just enough so that they can make a good decision. Other information is just noise. You need to have deep empathy and understanding so that you can synthesize the most relevant bite-sized data for them. And we cannot provide small data to farmers at scale unless we have big data. So today, if you were to ask me if we can tell Komio to harvest or not to harvest, yes, we can. We just need to zoom into Komio's location, get the weather forecast, and tell him the answer. And we can do the same for all paddy growing farmers in Myanmar. But we cannot do the same for other hardworking farmers growing different crops yet. There are also other decisions that Komio still needs to make. Which market? Will it be best for me to sell the paddy? At which price should I sell my paddy at? 
We cannot yet support all the decisions that Gumio is making. And we cannot yet support all the decisions that every farmer in Myanmar are making. Just yet, big data for agriculture is a novel idea, not just for Myanmar, but also for across the, uh, across the world. Not so long ago, the Climate Corporation, the leading provider of agriculture data, was acquired at the value of $930 million. That is almost $1 billion that is being invested in big data for big farmers. Since then, many more agriculture organizations have invested more in big data, and now big data is reaching not only to big farmers, but also to small farmers across the world. An organization called Plantix is using image recognition technology to help small farmers in countries like India self-diagnose the crop diseases just by taking photos. It's like taking a selfie. Based out of Kenya, another organization called WeFa is using AI to connect small farmers to each other so that they can chat away their struggles. The idea of using big data for small farmers in rural Myanmar is not just a dream anymore. It can be a reality. And our farmers are very ready for data technologies. It is so hard to find a rural household without a smartphone these days. But are we ready? Is Myanmar ready to provide big data to small farmers? You see, the data technologies are useless if we don't have data in the first place. So for us to be truly ready for data-driven agriculture and to be truly successful with that, we need to invest a lot in data, a lot more than what currently we are doing. We need to collaborate better to get quality data and also our initiatives like open data. And we need to start today. It is undeniable that agriculture is an important sector for the economic growth of our country. But to me, the reasons why I care about big data for agriculture and the reason why I care about small farmers making good decisions, it's not just a grand economic theory. It is possible. By using big data, farmers can prevent crop losses, and we can be assured that there is food on our table. By using big data, farmers don't need to spray pesticides unnecessarily and we can be certain that our food is safe. By using big data, farmers can apply fertilizers only as they need it. Our soil and our rivers will be free of harmful chemicals, and we will have a sustainable environment. After the cyclone Nagas, many of Gumio's friends quit farming and moved to Yango for a more stable job. I asked him the reason why he stayed on to farm. And he said, farming supplies the basic needs of a human life, from food to clothing to shelter. And I want to be one of the people who supports these basic needs for my neighbors and for everyone on earth. Our existence today and our sustainability in the future depends on the decisions like, that are made by small farmers like Gumio. And these decisions cannot be gambled away. Let us empower our small farmers with big data so that they can make a lot of good decisions. Thank you very much.